Hello and welcome to our Healthy Bites podcast. My name is Shanaz Latif. I'm a member with the Aga Khan Health Board. Let's talk emotions. This is our podcast today for parents and I'm joined by Shalina Ladha who's a member of the North London Jamaat. Shalina, Ya Ali Madad, please tell us a little bit about how you are and your family. Ya Ali Madad, everybody. My name is Shalina Ladha. I go to North London Jamaat Khana and I live at home with my son, who is 12 and has just recently started at secondary school. So as a family, we've gone through quite a major transition recently. Um, And I just wanted to share some of my experience with you, given the current climate and um, what's going on for us and for our children. Um, I work as an educational psychologist and a therapist, and I've been in my current role for the last 21 years. Um, I have an area of specialism. I work with children um, and young people who have complex social, emotional, mental health needs. Um, And I'm a real advocate for young children and their families. Um, The age range I work with is actually between 0 and 25. So I do have a whole range of experience, um, but primarily with uh, children in the primary sector and also children in secondary school. Thanks, Shalina. So I have a few questions that I wanted to ask you. The first one is, how can we tell what our children are feeling during this challenging time? So what I want to say in response to this question is that you know your child best. You are the expert in your own own child. Um, We've got people around us that can help us, of course, but primarily you are the person that knows your child best and it is really important to think about your child and follow their lead. It's important to think about how we connect with our child and our children and really attune to the way that they're feeling, how they may be expressing themselves, whether it's communicating through verbal methods, whether they're saying things to you about how they're feeling, whether they're not speaking to you but actually expressing how they're feeling through the way that they're communicating with you non-verbally. So a child may be very angry on one day and may be very upset on another, may be very calm on another. So just really keep an eye on the way in which your child is presenting and really just follow their lead in terms of how they're actually expressing what they're feeling. Obviously, give them opportunities to talk to you um, and keep yourself open to really listening to what they're communicating to you and really thinking about what they're saying and how they're presenting. That's really, really important. We always say connect before correct. So the importance of attuning and really securely attaching with your child is primarily the most important thing. If you connect with your child and you attune to their needs, they will trust you. They will come to you when they're feeling low. They will come to you when they're feeling happy. They will tell you what they want from you. And actually, you won't have to do very much work. You will just have to sort of link up with them in that way. So really, really important in relation to thinking about your child's feelings, attune to them and think about how they're presenting at any given time. I'd really like to talk to you as well about how we must acknowledge that, you know, this time is is full of change for them. You know, it's a change to their routine. It's a change to what's been going on for them um, in their daily lives. And it's really important to sort of think about how that is uh, making them feel. You know, for a lot of children, there will be a sense of loss because obviously they've stopped going to school. They're no longer with their friends. Um, And for some children, for example, those children who may be doing exams, and and now no longer doing those exams, of course, that will be a loss in itself. So it's really important to sort of think about um, how they're feeling about all of those different things as well. Thank you. That's helpful. My second question is about talking to our children about COVID-19. What are your thoughts on how we should do that? The first thing that I would say is please think about the way in which you are using language. The language you use is really important and it needs to be age appropriate in terms of thinking about where your child is developmentally. 
Obviously, if they're younger, they need simpler explanations. If they're older, they can have explanations which are a little bit more complex. Um, but what I would say is keep the information factual, keep it fairly simple, keep it fairly short, and be open to questions that they may be asking you about uh, what's going on. So um, at work we have a very simple fact sheet that we use with our schools and with our families and I'm just going to tell you um, what some of those uh, facts are that we give our families just to help you. So first of all we talk about the fact that it's a virus. Um, people often have a cough or a fever and sometimes they may have breathing difficulties. Most people get better by themselves, but some people do need to go to hospital um, and some people will need further treatment. But the important thing that we also say to children is for most children, it is a mild illness like a bad cold. So really it's about not raising anxiety with your children. You know, children will be thinking about this virus in lots of different ways. Some children may be thinking about it in quite a matter-of-fact way. Some children may not be thinking too much about it at all. Some children might be very, very upset and very anxious about what's going on. So please, please think about how your children are feeling and uh, respond accordingly. Um, allow them time and space to think and process uh, the information that you're giving them. And then, as I said earlier, please just think about any questions that they've got and respond to those questions um, as they come to you. If you don't know the answer to some of those questions, don't worry, just pause yourself. You know, we're not all experts in the field. Just say that you'll come back to them when you have some answers and then reach out if you need information from other people to help you with the information that you're passing on to them. Thank you. Those are helpful insights. And I wanted to ask also as families how we can work together and share together so that we are reducing our feelings of anxiety and of worry, uh, what we can do to stay well and look after our, our well-being. What are your thoughts on that? I think the most important thing here is um, balance. We really need to think about how we balance everything in our lives. Um, we have recently done another podcast which incorporates the Wheel of Life, which thinks about all the different aspects of your life, from health to finances to work to relationships, and thinking about how we give time to each of those things. That's really, really important. Um, in terms of thinking about our well-being, we really need to think about how we give time to all the different areas that are important in our lives. So, for example, as Ismailis, prayer, uh, praying with our families, praying alone is absolutely key and fundamental to our lives and to our well-being. Um, in conjunction with that, I would say if you can find time to meditate, like we do when we sit for Bandgi, that's also really important. That really gives us a time to be still, have a sense of uh, presence um, in the present, and gives us an opportunity to really reflect and to pray for everybody around us, and really, really to appreciate what we have got in life. You know, to think optimistically about um, our lives and about how we're all going to get through this as one Jamaat and how we can all support each other. Um, we need to definitely think about exercise in our lives, we need to think about a good diet, we need to think about incorporating um, good sleep patterns, because we need to think about how we continue to restore our bodies and to continue to feel well. Because if we feel well, then our children will feel well. There's a lot of... Um, sort of transference that goes on between us and our children and we really really need to keep strong in order for our children to keep strong. Uh, the analogy that I often use when I'm working with parents is this, is that if we're in a, a plane and the oxygen masks come down uh, we need to put the oxygen masks on ourselves first before we put the oxygen masks on our children. In other words, we need to look after ourselves first, take care of our self-care needs, think about what we can do to um, keep ourselves uh, fresh and alive every day, and then we can be there and present for our children um, at all times, which is really, really important. Um, 
Please stay connected to your family and to your friends. Obviously, we can't see them uh, by going out anymore, but we can certainly stay connected online. We can stay connected on WhatsApp. We can have Zoom calls. We can have parties. We can do quizzes. We can have lots and lots of fun online. So please find ways that work for you. Um, and I would say another thing that I would recommend is the importance of routine and structure. Uh, this will be different for all families, obviously. Some families are uh, less routine bound than others. But I think at this time in particular, it's really important that, all, that we all feel safe and secure. So my advice to you would be think about a routine that you can develop within your own family and develop that routine with your children um, and with other members of your family that you're living with. Don't do it in isolation. All join in and uh, um, put that routine together uh, with all of you included within that and then try and stick to that routine as much as possible and think about what we said earlier about the importance of balance and ensuring that there are different things in that daily routine so going back to that idea about prayer meditation exercise time to eat time to play that's really really important um, ensuring that there's lots of time to connect you know in a way that's fun in a way that you know you are just being with your children and just enjoying each other enjoying each other's company is so so important so please please don't forget that in your daily routine Team. Great. Thank you so much. And finally, if we are struggling and we do need support, where can we go for help? Initially, reach out to family, reach out to friends and reach out to members in the Jamaat that you know um, in the first instance. If you need to reach out to people that have more experience um, because you have some um, real concerns or you're really struggling please reach out to our team our mental health uh, team we are on hand to support you at any time um, and similarly in every community uh, locally and nationally there will be mental health teams um, available to support families so please um, look online and uh, get the details of your local mental health teams so um, the most important message here is that please, please reach out if you feel that you need support, if you feel that you need help, come back to us, go to family members, friends, go to lo local and national organisations. But the most important thing here is that you talk about how you're feeling and that you communicate any worries, fears, anxieties and if you're extremely worried then please go to emergency services go to your GP or ring emergency services if you feel that there is a crisis that's really important. Thank you Shalina I'm really grateful for your time and expertise in talking to us today and I hope you and everyone listening today stay safe.